Hello everyone and welcome back to the third and final part of the Human Aimbot Guide. Thank you for being here. Today you're going to master the art of clicking, you're going to see and understand the most important settings for both mouse and keyboard and controller, and then we're gonna talk about that lesson that I keep saying nobody is talking about. And when I say it's important, it's not just important for this aimbot guide, no no, it's also important for any movement guide or anything that will help you improve in any game and maybe even life. Now let's start with flicking. Oh my guys Good palms Kira, good palms Oh my god Clicking is simply going from A to B as accurately and as fast as possible. Now, if you're on a PC, you can check out Aim Labs and see the amazing library that they have for flicking exercises, but you're not gonna need that this time because you already did most, if not all, of the flicking exercises. Remember back in part two when you were working on your tracking exercises? You were going from A to B in a perfect straight line and in all the different directions and dimensions. So now you just have to do the same thing while adding more speed and accuracy to it, that's all. So you are only going to need one exercise and two very important tips. So start off by picking two different points and work on going back and forth between them while making sure you are landing your crosshair on the target. After that, pick two points that are further apart and do the same thing. And make sure that you spice it up the same way you did in tracking by adding different directions both vertically horizontally or in an oblique way just to make sure that you are developing the proper muscle memory for all the distances and directions and then once you are comfortable with that start adding bots but if you're gonna do that make sure that you are using a bigger multiplayer map so you get a real sense of flicking from one direction to the other and if you don't have multi hop into plunder or lockdown quads which is what i prefer because if you're practicing or flicking that means that you did everything in part one and everything in part two which means that you are ready to start working on things versus real players and now for the first tip whether you're on mouse and keyboard or controller it doesn't matter if you want faster flicks you need a higher sense and with a higher sense comes a little bit more difficulty so keep in mind that you need to practice a little bit more and it'll just take a little bit more time that's all now the second tip is for both inputs but for controllers it's even more important if you have an ads sensitivity multiplier that is lower than one but you're on a high sense flicking while adsing will be slower so what I would suggest if you're on a target and you're ADSing and you want to flick to here for example, you stop the ADS, you flick and then you get the ADS back and you don't have to stop all the way. The moment you start that exit animation from the ADS is when you're going to be back to your old sense that has nothing to do with that multiplier that's lower than one. And as you're moving, you just snap and then when you're back on the second target, you ADS back in and shoot. Practice for around 15-20 minutes a day and I'm only saying this high number because you are already doing the other exercises from part one and part two simultaneously while working on your flicks. And now let's move on to the best settings. All right, so one of the first and most important things about the settings is evaluating your sensitivity and seeing if you need to do something about it. So pick any random map, any game mode, it doesn't matter, just pick something and try to use it as a target. So in this case, I have this thing in front of me. What you need to do is you need to strafe to the right and left while hip firing and keeping the center dot on this target and then try to do the same thing again while ADSing. And if you're aiming at the target the whole time or most of the time, then you're good to go. Now, if your sense is too high, for example, I'm gonna go from eight to a sense of uh, 50, for example. What's gonna happen is uh, while you're straightening to the right and you're correcting your aim to the left, it's gonna over aim. So I'm, you see, I'm going over the target as I go to the right and left because my sense is a little bit too high. And if your sense is too low, the opposite is gonna happen while I'm trying to aim to the right. Yeah, that's that's extremely too, too low. You get the picture. You can do this, or if you want, you can just watch any of your clips and see if you're over aiming or under aiming. And in case you're over aiming or under aiming, you don't have to change your sensitivity. You have one of two options here. The first option is acknowledging what you are doing wrong and try to correct it by moving your controller or your mouse differently and stop doing those mistakes. 
The second option is to lower or higher your sense in case the first one doesn't work out for you. The reason I'm suggesting this is two things. First of all, I try playing on different senses. I'm on 1000 DPI. I try playing on 6, on 10, on 12, and even 50, which is like insanely high. That's just too high. It's like on controller, you're playing 100, 100, which doesn't exist. Uh, and I still dropped high kill games. It's all about muscle memory. The second reason I'm saying there's no perfect sense is because each sense will reward you with something. So if you're on a high sense, you're going to have better movement, more snappy reactions, but other things like tracking and recoil control might be a little bit harder. And if you're on low sense, the opposite is going to happen, especially your movement is going to be impacted a lot. But if you're on a controller, rotational aim assist and aim assist will work better for you because they like to work better with lower sense. Personally, I always suggest anything between a mid to high sense because the rewards that you get from having a lower sense, you will also get them from mid to high sense as you practice more and develop that muscle memory. But I can't say for the opposite if you're on lower sense because movement and flicks, yeah, that's going to be a really big challenge. And now for another important setting for both mouse and keyboard and controller is the ADS sensitivity multiplier. You're going to see a lot of controller players, a lot of mouse and keyboard players that will have a sense that's lower than one. Now, this is only a short term solution that will keep giving you the same problems forever if you do that. And why am I saying that is let's say you're a high sense player. You need that ADS sensitivity multiplier to be lower. So I'm on eight. Let's say I put it on a 0.8. It'll become a six or a seven. I'm not sure with the math here, because now when I'm shooting, it's going to be easier for me to control it because my sense is lower. It makes sense. It, it does. It has its benefits. But here's the thing. Now, when I'm not ADSing, I have a completely different muscle memory. And when I'm ADSing, I have a different one completely, which is going to make me have this problem of juggling between things. And it's not going to make me consistent the whole time. So I'm going to say two things. The first thing is if you're on medium or low sense, never change this. Never, never. Always keep it on a one. If you're on a high sense, I would suggest keeping at a one because... You're not going to have to deal with two different muscle memories and with time and proper practice, you, all those problems of like, oh, it's too fast are going to fade away with muscle memory. So I'm personally using one. I've used it one when I was on eight cents, on 10 cents, on 12 cents, and it was completely fine. Another important setting that's going to be placed differently for controllers, but it's there is the ADS sensitivity transition timing. Always keep this on instant, always. And now for the mouse and keyboard, specific setting which is the ads sensitivity type listen relative is basically that you have to take in consideration your monitor resolution and do some weird ass math and then you'll know what number you should be putting it on i tried changing this number and it didn't do anything basically what it should do is if you're not adsing you and you move your hand like this it's gonna give you the same result when you're adsing based on the number you put but sadly this coefficient thing does not work so just to make things easier, keep it on legacy. It will give you that one-to-one -one ratio, which I explained multiple times why it's important. And everything under mouse calibration, put it on a zero or keep it on off. And now for controller players, two important things that everybody I talked to was saying. First of all, the aim assist type, there's two different ones. You got default and black ops. Now people say that black ops was OP and then it got nerfed. And now it's a little bit better than default. And some people are saying that black ops and default are the same. So this is going to be a personal experience for you. You need to try it out and see if there's a difference because everybody had conflicting answers. So go between default and black ops. Precision and focusing is something you should not try. And there's the ADS sensitivity transition timing that I was talking about before. And now the most important one, the aim response curve type. Everybody on controller that I know, whether they're pro, semi-pro, or just beginning said that standard is something you should avoid because it's just, it's just bad. Okay, let's just say it's just bad. As for linear, where it's great for having that one-to-one -one ratio, but this is only suggested for high sense players. If you're on low sense or medium sense and you have linear, it's going to be hard for you to track and even harder for you to flick. And then we have dynamic, which everybody is suggesting, including me. It has an S type response curve, which is basically what it's doing is the moment you start moving, it's going to give you that, that instant speed push. And it's really good for reactions, really good for flicks. Yes, it's not linear, so the way you get used to it is not going to be consistent at the start, but it's definitely what you need for this type of game. And please don't forget to turn this back on. Like, I told you guys to practice without it, but when you hop on Warzone or Multi, turn this back on, please. All right, and now for the third and final part of this guide, the lesson that nobody seems to be talking about. This is going to be coming from my heart, and it's going to be more of a freestyle. What I want to say, guys, is if you want to improve in this guide or any movement guide or anything in any game or anything in life, you have to love failure, you have to accept failure, and you have to stop judging yourself like that. 
like I'm close to 4,000 coaching sessions and the amount of negative energy that people have because they, they're so hard on themselves, they're so mad at themselves, is insane. And the only time they improve, the only time they're consistent, and the only time they break that plateau is when they learn to accept their failure and take advantage of it and take that negative energy and turn it into something positive. I know it's such a cliche thing and mainstream thing to say, but it's the true fact. Like, instead of trash talking yourself, which is going to affect you mentally on the long run, say to yourself, GG's, it is what it is. I have a chance to reset. Go do some push ups, some sit ups between games. That will even make you in a better mood. Record yourself. Ask yourself, is it because of my aim? Is it because of my movement? Is it because of my positioning? Is it because I did something one minute earlier that changed the fight that's happening right now? And if you feel like that's something you can't do or don't know how to do, that is totally fine. I can help with that. Just hit the link in the description and check out my coaching page. What I'm saying is love failures. I love making mistakes because that's the only way for me to get better. And everybody that I've coached, the only people that were very consistent and were having insanely quick results were the people that didn't care about losing. The only time they cared was like, did I do something wrong here that I can improve? Oh, okay, cool. This is it. I'm going to practice on it. And even if I do the same mistake a hundred times, a thousand times, I'm improving bit by bit, baby steps. But when they trash talk themselves, it, they didn't get better. They got worse, actually, because you are what you say to yourself. If you keep saying, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, you're going to feel depressed after a few days of saying that. So please, guys, if there's one thing you can take from this guide is be gentle with yourselves. Love yourselves, accept yourselves, and from there, start working on yourselves. You can't do that in any other way. All that negative energy, all that fire, that's your fuel. That is your fuel. For you to improve though not for you to burn yourself all right and that was it thank you for watching the human aimbot guide next up we're going to be working on a movement guide or wars on general tips like for game sense and positioning and all that stuff so you tell me down in the comments what do you want to see next and we'll go from there and don't forget to like the video and i'll see you in the next one